Barry Smith here again. Uh, we are going to start getting into subnetting, but before I actually start showing you how to subnet, uh, we need to really, I need to, to tell you a few bits of information um, to kind of help you understand what in the world you're doing. Because one of the things that happened to me when I was learning subnetting is I was told the, the how, I was told how to subnet. Um, I was told all the math and stuff involved and I could mimic the numbers, but I didn't really understand why I was doing it. What was the purpose? Um, you know, why would anybody want to do this? Um, so it, it's very important. I think it's very important to get the point across as to what subnetting is and why you would even want to do it to begin with. Uh, so I got a couple questions here on the board that I want to um, uh, answer for you. Uh, the first one says, why do we want to subnet a network? And the second one is, what is subnetting, period? I mean, just what is subnetting? Um, essentially, let's do the second question first. Uh, subnetting, the word subnet is short for subnetwork. So in essence, what you have is you have a network that you're going to be working on. Think of it as like your, your company's network, the business you work for, their network. You have a network, one network that runs your company. And what you want to do is you want to take that network and you want to break it into smaller pieces. You want to create what's called sub-networks. It's a sub-network of your overall network. So subnetting is, in essence, breaking something down into smaller pieces. And the easiest way that uh, um, I think that uh, uh, can explain this is by, you know, everybody's ordered a pizza before and everybody's had a pizza delivered to their house or went and got a pizza somewhere. If you think about it, when you purchase a pizza, you purchase one whole pizza. And when, the, when you open the box, the pizza is right there. It's round, uh, assuming it's round. Some can be square, I know, but it's round and it is one whole pizza. You bought one whole pizza. But you don't eat the whole pizza, not at least in one sitting. Uh, what you do is you eat the pizza in slices. So in essence, they take that one whole pizza and they chop it up into smaller pieces that is easier for you to eat. But how many pizzas do you have? You still have one. You have one pizza that's broken into smaller pieces to make it easier for you to manage and easier for you to handle. Well, this is the same concept, the exact same concept for subnetting. You have one network, one whole network, that you're going to break down into smaller pieces so that you can manage the network easier. You can organize things better. And in fact, that leads us into the top question up here, which is, why do you want to subnet a network? What, what benefits, what is the reasoning behind doing this? Other than it's on a test, it's in a book. Um, you know, why would you want to do this? Well, there are three basic reasons, or, or three main reasons, why you would want to subnet a network. The first is security. Security is huge in the world today. Uh, you see it on the news all the time. Uh, there are um, you know, terrorist attacks. There are all sorts of uh, hacking going on. Uh, so security in general is very important. And your network security is also very important. You have a lot of information, a lot of data stored on your network that you do not want people to get access to. Uh, it could be anything from personal records to a top secret project that your company is working on that you just don't want to fall into the wrong hands. So security, uh, subnetting a network actually brings security to your network. Another thing that uh, uh, happens when you subnet is organization. Organization. You're organizing your network. You can take each piece of your network and you can assign it to a particular um, division or particular department within your company. For instance, you could take one slice here and put everyone in your company that's in, say, human resources. They might be in this slice and only human resources be in that slice. Whereas the very next one, it might be your sales force and only your sales force. Next could be just your IT department and so on and so on. Uh, you know, really the, the uh, possibilities are endless. Um, so you can organize your network and by organizing with people, um, organizing, I can't even talk, organizing your network with people that have like jobs, 
allow you to secure the network better. And I'll explain that more in just a minute. And the third thing that subnetting gives you is performance. Smaller networks tend to be faster networks. So you have the ability to increase network performance by isolating each one of these networks away from each other and it can make your network run a little bit faster. Now, the security, the organization, and the performance, this all comes from, again, taking your one whole network here and breaking it into smaller pieces. Now, the way that this really works and the way that this functions so well is from use of one network device that you should already have a little bit of uh, uh, experience with, and that network device is called a router. A router is a network device that has one function in life, well, I should say one main function in life, and that function is to connect different networks together. Well, what signifies a different network? A different network is signified by its network ID. Or, if you've seen the other video about the telephone, remember the network ID and the area code are really the same thing. So a router takes the different area codes, or the different network IDs, and allows them to connect together, allows them to talk. So in essence, if we take our little pizza analogy here, and we take each slice as a sub-network, or a small piece of our overall network, if we were to put a router here in the middle, so we make a router go in the middle, we can allow all these other networks to talk to one another, but the beautiful thing is, is that since we're the network administrator, we control this. We control this router, which means that we control all access from one network to another network. If we don't want certain people to access human resources, they won't, because we will block them. If we want to give them access, we can, we will. The cool part about this is that you have what's called a single point of administration. So you can administer the router, no matter how many people you have out here on the network, those people must go through your router to get to another location. Therefore, if I manage this one router, if I manage this one place, everyone to go from one network to another must go through here and then over there. And so I can manage that. They have to go through me. It's a wonderful thing, and that gives us our security. Obviously, the organization, we could break things down by organizing our departments or organizing our divisions within our company. Uh, each division or each department has its own sub-network. And then the performance, again, performance increases. Usually these are smaller, uh, smaller pieces of the overall pie, so the smaller piece gives us a little bit better performance. So this is what subnetting is, the basic, uh, basics of what subnetting is as well as, you know, why would you want to do this? Here's why you want to do it. Now, we have to learn how, how to do it. We have to go through how to subnet. And I'm telling you, so far, I'm hoping that you see these videos make things pretty easy because they are pretty easy. It's not, people th make this more complicated than it really is. And I'm going to show you here in just a minute that subnetting is actually a lot easier than you think it might be. So stay tuned and, uh, We'll go to the next lesson. Have a good day.